Today we're going to talk about neutropenia and fever in cancer patients. Neutropenia is defined as the absolute neutrophil count. And as you recall, A and C is calculated by multiplying the total white blood cell count by the combined percentage of segs and bands. Cells younger than bands really don't have any phagocytic potential and so are not counted. The risk of invasive infection increases with both the depth and duration of neutropenia and defined as less than a thousand where increased risk begins even though 1500 is the low end of normal and 500 is where the high risk period begins as you get closer to zero the risk increases geometrically breakdown of skin and mucosal barriers including central line and of course perianal um, uh, skin breakdown. Humoral immune function can affect neutropenia risk and this can be seen in chronic chemo patients who are uh, immunosuppressed and thus never really quite clean um, out old infections also in BMT patients. The depth of T-cell suppression and this is an important cause of neutropenic fever in uh, leukemia patients. During induction phase, for example, on high-dose steroid, these patients essentially don't have T-cell function and are at more risk than you would otherwise be given the neutropenia that they have. And then, of course, contact with sick or colonized people or objects. And thus, the long-term hospitalized patient, the patient with poor home hygiene, or in an environment where you have a warm, humid climate, uh, where fungus and mold can grow readily. Clinical history is always important no matter what disease you deal with. But several critical elements of history need to be added to this. You want to know when the fever started and you want to know how high it was. Typically your families won't have thermometers and this you'll have to rely on, on uh, estimates but if they have a thermometer and you can know what the temperature was, that's very helpful. You want to document in your history, particularly in an emergency room setting or in a new patient setting, the primary disease, the last chemotherapy they received, when they received it, and who their oncologist is, so that you can contact them for more data. You want to know about coexisting symptoms. Are they short of breath? Are they having chills? Are they having fatigue? And so on. And then you want to know what the family's health status is. If all the brothers and sisters have colds, then likely they're more likely having a viral infection in the patient you're dealing with. Um, on the other hand, if everyone else in the family is healthy, then you have to be more suspicious of bacterial disease. Critical elements in the physical examination, vital signs, particularly the heart rate and pulse pressure, which can be early warning signs for vascular collapse, respiratory rate and effort, skin wounds and openings, you want to look at the central line, the mouth, the perianal area, looking again for redness, pain, swelling, or tenderness. Uh, mouth, you want to look for mucosal breakdown. And central lines, redness or drainage at the exit site, pain along the central line tunnel, uh, all warning signs for infections in the central line. And then of course the abdomen. We're feeling for masses, or feeling for focal uh, tenderness is uh, um, common as a sign of uh, abdominal infection. Blood cultures from the port of the central line. Um, we will sometimes do a peripheral vein blood culture, particularly if we have a, a old line or one that's been used quite a bit. Um, a peripheral vein culture and a blood culture will give you two sites of uh, positive cultures. If the blood culture from the line is positive but the peripheral vein is not, I would be inclined to, to believe either contaminated occurred or the line itself was contaminated. Urine for urinalysis and culture. Particularly important to remember urinalysis and hematuria. Most of the time people with neutropenic fever who have a positive urine culture will have urine in the uh, urine positive for hematuria but not necessarily positive for LCE or nitrite. Chemistries, looking for uh, perfusion of the kidneys. Chest x-ray, look for pneumonia. And then a type impossible, 
These are frequently patients who have more than one cell line abnormal and will need a transfusion, and this saves you having to draw blood a second time. Neutropenic patients should be considered in three risk groups. A standard risk group patient would have stable vital signs, a relatively short duration of neutropenia, or a short duration of expected future neutropenia, and would have no skin or gut breakdown. Contrast that to a high risk patient where they have stable vitals, but either are expected to have prolonged neutropenia or they have significant skin or gut breakdown. Shock is always a concern in the high risk group and that would be manifested commonly by tachycardia or a widened pulse pressure where the delta between the systolic and diastolic pressure is great. Also altered mental status, which is a, a later finding um, following the widening of the pulse pressure. Treatment would include monotherapy for the, cef for the uh, low risk patient using cefepime. High risk patients have vancomycin added to the cefepime and a patient who has impending shock, um, either by vital signs or by uh, physical exam findings, have a gram-negative rod um, additional therapy with genomycin added. These are patients who also require blood pressure support and intensive care unit admission. Um, the BMT patient has added risk factors. They have a long duration of neutropenia, they have had previous cycles of chemotherapy and this could become colonized. They've had uh, mouth sores frequently, which can extend throughout the GI tract, leaving them exposed to intestinal infection. They have frequently large pore central lines, which have big openings and thus a larger area for infection. They've had many previous antibiotics, which can lead to suction resistant bacteria or fungus. The BMT patient also has special site infections, particularly in the patient who has prolonged neutropenia, sinus infection, infections in the abdomen, or infected wounds from surgical procedures all have to be considered. In addition, neutropenia lasting three days with fever uh, and negative blood cultures have to be considered possible fungal infections. So when to add antifungals? Antifungals are added in a BMT patient after three days of persistent fever with negative cultures and appropriate antibiotics. We empirically use voriconazole at about six milligrams per kilo per dose for the first day and then four milligrams per kilo per dose after that. Voriconazole is a much more easily tolerated agent than amphotericin. However, there are side effects. It is frequently a cause of interactions with other medications, including the uh, um, tacrolimus, serolimus family of drugs. It may also interfere with other drugs, and thus empiric use of orconazole should prompt a phone call and discussion with the attending and with the uh, BMT pharmacist. It may cause prolonged QT and torsades to points, and if an ID consult is not already done on this patient, they should certainly have a consult at that time. Thanks for your attention, and if you have any questions, drop me an email. Bye.